Shana Tova, Gid Yontiv, Good Shabbos, Shabbat Shalom. There's a lot of greetings that can be said tonight. <clears throat> Over the summer, I read a beast of a novel. It was called Captivity, and I, I call it a beast because it was really long. It was uh, 864 pages. I'm not saying that to brag, but uh, I also call it a beast because it, w- it was great. It was funny, it was moving, it was deep, it was philosophical, and very Jewish. It was originally written in Hungarian, I read it in translation, by, by a, a well-known Hungarian writer, Georgi Spiro. And it's a historical novel set around 2,000 years ago in Rome. In Rome, in Jerusalem, other locales in the land of Israel, and in Alexandria. Now, if you don't like epic historical novels, stay with me. The main character, his name was Gaius Theodorus, his fam- but his family calls him Uri. And he's a Jew from Rome. Because of crazy circumstances, he travels around the empire. He goes on the Pesach pilgrimage to Jerusalem. He gets thrown in jail. Uh, his cellmate happens to be Jesus. He, he ends up in Alexandria and stays with the family of Philo, the the ancient Jewish philosopher. He meets kings and would-be kings, and even, even the emperor. Um, is a bit, uh, one literary critic says it's a bit like Voltaire's uh, Candide. Now, there's so much in the novel to talk about, but I want to focus on one aspect, and that's issues of homelessness. Uri isn't comfortable in his hometown in Rome. He has a hard time finding a trade because he is nearsighted. And he likes to read religious and philosophical texts all day, and he has no one to discuss them with. He finds his fellow Roman Jews too narrow-minded. Now, in the land of Israel, though, he has a hard time connecting with all of the peasants' simple faith, and he has a hard time trying to be a laborer, as I said before, so he couldn't really fit in there. He loves the cosmopolitan life of Alexandria, but it all goes to hell with the, because the Jewish community there is suddenly subjected to a pogrom. So where does this Jew fit in? Where does a Jew fit in? I think this is a very contemporary issue. Maybe a perennial Jewish, Jewish, Jewish community issue. here in Toronto and all over North America. Our liberal form of Judaism, of reform, conservative, reconstructionist, is dominant and vibrant in the continent. Yes, there are some issues, and we can discuss demography for a long time, but I think we are living in one of the most vibrant Jewish cultures ever. We are comfortable here, and our Judaism is meaningful here. And we also have the beloved state of Israel. We are connected there in so many ways, family, culture, business, tourism. But there is a reform movement, and I want to talk about that soon. But for the most part, Israeli religion is not our Judaism. Israel has an established religion for Jews, but it is Orthodox Judaism. Most Jews in Israel, 80% or so, are not Orthodox. They would probably say on a, on a survey that they are either secular or traditional. But the Orthodox rabbinate, which is a wing of the government, and is government-funded, they control marriage and divorce, burial, conversion, and state-funded synagogues and mikvahot. The Kotel, the Western Wall, in Jerusalem is designated as a synagogue and therefore is controlled by the Orthodox rabbinate. For various historical and coalition political reasons, this has been the case since the founding of the state in 1948. Most of the secular socialist-leaning founders of Israel did not think much of religion and therefore they gladly handed over the reins to the Orthodox who they thought they actually thought they might assimilate to their socialist culture. Now, I remember learning about this the first time I went to study in Israel when I was a teenager. 
I loved Israel, but felt a little uncomfortable knowing that liberal forms of, religion, of religious Judaism had no official status. Now, as a, as a believer in separation of religion and state, I was also uncomfortable that any religion had a when government I spent uh, status. a year of university study at Hebrew University in Jerusalem a few years later, I started learning more of the Israeli reform movement. I visited the rabbinical school Hebrew Union College and I prayed in reform synagogues. I saw Israelis trying to express their Jewish religion, their Jewish identity in different ways. The reform movement officially established itself in Israel in the 50s. Now many Jews who came to pre-state Palestine in the 30s and 40s from Ger Germany had liberal reform backgrounds but they did not establish institutions except maybe the high school in Haifa that became known as the Leo Beck High School. As I said, most Israeli Jews at the time were not that interested in religion. And there was no reform tradition in Eastern Europe and the Middle East where most of the Israelis' roots were from. And it didn't help that the founding of the reform movement in North America ben -Gurion was called us evil agents of assimilation in a letter. Some here may remember stories of the controversy of the hiring of Rabbi Maurice Eisendrath because he was an anti-Zionist and people in Toronto were very uncomfortable with that. Now, he changed his position and he says Toronto changed his position. And so did the reform movement change their position. By the 30s and 40s, the majority of reform Jews were pro-Zionist. And rabbis like Stephen S. Wise and Abba Hillel Silver were leaders in the Zionist movement. But they did not mix their reform and their Israel. They were not interested so much in a reform movement in Israel. But some reform leaders did contemplate what religious pluralism would look like in Israel. Many Reformed Jews were inspired by the pioneering and egalitarian spirit, spirit of the kibbutz movement. Eisendrath said, there are certain phases of Zionism which constitute a concretization of the program of Reformed Judaism, such as we have witnessed nowhere else upon this far-flung earth. They saw it as a prophetic religion, but it was not synagogue-based. And this is where Torah learning has historically been done, the synagogue. So there was a disconnect. Reform leaders, reform Jews here in North America were inspired and saw Zionism as a religious movement. But they were confused that the, they were not studying Torah they and praying in synagogues. Jews in towns and cities could be engaged by liberal synagogue communities. The, lip, the fictional character Uri that I spoke about, reformed Jews from the diaspora did travel to Israel and return with reports. In the early 50s, Rabbi Joshua Trachtenberg came back from his trip to tell his reform colleagues, Israel is, ready, is not ready now to absorb liberal Judaism. It must be helped to prepare for this. But he states, Israel needs not reform Judaism as we know it here, but its own indigenous, authentic restatement of the eternal truth of our faith in a vocabulary which can reach the hearts of the people and in institutions of its own devising which can revolutionize its spiritual life. We dare not presume to ex export reform to Israel. Can we, liberal Jews of America, inextricably identified with the concept of an evolving, forever progressive Judaism, do less for Israel's resuscitation? To ask the question is to answer Sending it. support to help foster youth movements, educational streams, and, quote, experimental Seven years synagogues. after Trachtenberg made this report, the Israel Movement for, for Reform and Progressive Judaism has more than 50 synagogue communities, two kibbutzim, a rabbinical seminary, and educational programs all over the country. We have heard about the struggles to get reform institutions built with government funding. We have heard about vandalism against reform com communities and their buildings. And we, have, of course, have heard about the breakdown of the Western Wall Compromise. But tonight, 
I don't want to focus so much on the struggles. I want to talk about successes of the movement, of the Israel movement for progressive and reform Judaism. There are reformed synagogues in all of the big cities in Israel, and the movement has made a concerted effort to plant seeds in smaller towns throughout the land. Of these communities is Evin Yehuda near Netanya. The reform synagogue there, Kehilat HaShachar, began in 2009 by a few families who wanted to celebrate the high holidays in an egalitarian environment, and they wanted to see their daughters and sons called to the Torah as B'nai Mitzvah. While still small by our standards, the community has grown, and people from neighboring towns come to Evin Yehuda to celebrate Shabbat and Holy Days and study Torah. The community meets in the town's history museum. It's hard for a non-Orthodox synagogue to get permission to build their own uh, building and get government funds to do that. And many of our Holy Blossom members have been to their, to their uh, community about a year and a half ago when they celebrated Yom HaTzmaut, Israeli Independence Day, together. Our two communities were linked together because a member of Kihila Tashachar, Rida Gvili, who was originally from Toronto, happened to be at Holy Blossom. She met members of our sisterhood, because and a shidduch was made. Holy Blossom Sisterhood. We have had with Evan Yehuda, with the synagogue in Evan Yehuda, Torah learning together over Skype, Hanukkah candle lighting. We've even had, uh, uh, we've sung songs with our sister congregation under the new leadership of the rabbinical student Yael Vergen we hope our partnership will grow and there are many communities like Kehila Tashachar all over the country when the next time you're in Israel ask me I'll hook you up with one at synagogues like the one in Evan Yehuda and also, there are traveling reform rabbis that go around the country. Girls and women are getting opportunities to experience Torah study in a contemporary way through Benot Mitzvah programs, like the mother-daughter Benot Mitzvah program that the women of Reform Judaism supports at the Kibbutz uh, Ramot Menashe in the Galilee. Girls and women experience a Judaism where they can express their identities with dignity. The reform movement in Israel as a leader for fighting for gender equality, not just in ritual roles, but also in general society. The Israel Religious Action Center, the legal and political advocacy arm of the movement, from their website it says they promote acceptance of religious pluralism in Israel, working to secure equal funding and status for reform and conservative movements. They promote freedom of marriage and equal rights in divorce. They oppose discrimination against women and gender segregation. They oppose racism in Israel, particularly when incited by religious or government representatives. And they secure the rights of converts to Judaism. Now, you may have heard of the Israel Religious Action Center, the IRAC, when it legally defends the women, the women of the wall, a group of women who pray monthly at the Western Wall on Rosh Chodesh in Jerusalem. They, they do the heretical thing of praying out loud and chanting Torah. Again, members of our congregation got to do this, including our own Lindy. And you might have heard, as I alluded earlier, about the Kotel controversy. The government of Israel made a compromise with the reform movement, the conservative movement, and the women of the wall to have a section on the southern end of the western wall, which was which is an archaeological site, um, they, the compromise was to build a platform there for egalitarian, egalitarian praying to take place. This platform still has not been built. And the government, they say they have temporarily held the plan, even though the Supreme Court, which the Israel Re Religious Action Center pushed them to make this decision, the Supreme Court says Before the government has to act. One of its roles is being a catalyst for a more open and just society in Israel. And this is what Zionism is about, creating a just Jewish society in Israel. I want to tell you the story 
of Ido Mordechai. Ido's mother grew up in a family with five brothers and six sisters. Her father was an ultra-Orthodox rabbi from Morocco. Now she and her husband did not raise Ido in an Orthodox home, but it was one that didn't know what from reform. In fact, from his extended family, if he ever heard of reform, when Ido it was got into the prestigious Leo Beck High School in Haifa, which is affiliated with the reform movement, he was offered a job in the synagogue, in the school. And the synagogue, of course, is reform. He was a little apprehensive, but the connection he felt with the rabbi and the community made him rethink the stereotypes of reform Judaism he learned as a kid, a reform Jew. He feels that being reform in Israel is hard, but he is proud of the fight to make Israel more pluralistic because in a more pluralistic society, all streams of Judaism will thrive. It will be better for all Jews in Israel, and Israel needs the support of North American Jews for this, he tells me. If you haven't met him yet, Ido is one of our Shin Shinim, who we share with the Toronto Leo Bex Day School. These young Israeli emissaries defer the start of their army service to serve the Jewish people here in Toronto. They bring Israel to us, and hopefully we can bring a vibrant, progressive Jewish life to them. Our brothers and sisters in the reform movement in Israel need our help. Half of the temple board, I want you to consider something a little bit different tonight, this Yom Kippur. Usually at this point, someone would make an Israel Bonds pitch. I'm still doing that. When you invest in Israel Bonds, though, I want you to understand, or we want you to understand, that your dollars are channeled to support the priorities set by the current Israeli government. And those priorities explicitly Israel don't bonds include are a solid pluralism. financial investment, but not a donation. You can easily turn a bond into tzedakah by donating it to a worthy cause, like to Holy Blossom Temple, or to support one of the many organizations which promote Reform Judaism in Israel. Whether or not you choose to invest in Israel bonds, we ask you to consider our sister Zionist orga organizations to be among the recipients of your philanthropy. I'm going to name three. Artsa Canada. This is our Canadian Reform Zionist organization. It directly supports Reform Jewish life in Israel and promotes Israel-focused education programs here in Canada. We can also support the Israel Movement for Reform and Progressive Judaism. This is the umbrella organization for Reform Judaism in Israel. Among the 50 sister congregations, a handful are large and well-established, but many are less than 20 years old and need our encouragement to lay down strong roots and flourish. The Israel Religious Action Center, this is the advocacy wing of the reform movement in Israel. Their brilliant team of lawyers takes on cases which protect the religious freedoms of Israelis. The Israel Religious Action Center hotline receives calls from across the country, from across the spectrum of, religious, of Jewish religious observance. Some cases are brought as high as the Supreme Court, like the matter of women's public prayer at the Kotel. And finally, we ask that every member of our flagship reform congregation become a member of Artsa Canada. For $36, you will earn representation within the World Zionist Congress. These votes ensure that reform Jewish voices are heard that a pluralistic agenda is set at the tables of diaspora-Israel relations. You can become a member of Arts of Canada by simply checking off the Arts of box on your annual Holy Blossom membership, or, follow, or by following the link noted on the Arts of Canada postcard, which we have included in the envelope in your high holiday tickets. By becoming a member of Arts of Canada, you will receive periodic emails to stay informed about urgent matters, which threaten or advance the cause of pluralism for world Jewry. Thank you for expanding your love for Israel to include a particular bond with the small but growing reform movement in Israel. In a recent survey, 34% of Israeli Jews said that the progressive reform movement is the Judaism they identify with the most. 
identify with, the leading but not get full engagement of the diaspora. Our, as a congregation filled with many Ohave Yisrael, many lovers of Israel, we must step forward to ensure that religious freedoms are protected and supported across the spectrum of Jewish life. Shana Tovah.